So I think with the exception of uh, you, Adrina, and Dasha, I already kind of keyed up the idea for this se seed session. And um, I want to just today, I mean, in this uh, session right now, Adrina and I are partners in crime. And what we want to do, hi, Tina, good, good afternoon to you. Um, the idea here is that we want to propose a seed session that eventually will go beyond the boundaries of the Nature of Cities Festival. And we want to explore something that was already explored two years ago at the World Forum in Urban Forests, which is women in urban natural resource management. And two years ago in Mantova, um, it was one of the most talked about sessions because at the uh, at that forum, um, there was a lack of discussion and dialogue, and Adrina was there with me, lack of discussion and dialogue around women, women and children in particular. And one of the keynote speakers um, stood up and talked to everyone about lifting women up, lifting young girls up, especially around urban areas because they face a lot of challenges. And so what we wanted to do is bring that, the discussion back, uh, re-energize it. We wanted to start it out at the Nature of Cities Festival and then go beyond that to have three, four or five more discussion topics, um, one in March, so every month thereafter and um, want to turn this over to Adrina, my uh, good friend and member of the first ever international seminar on urban forestry and community engagement. She works um, at Tree Canada and um, is a brilliant thinking partner and um, one that um, I has really helped shape our seminar series and I'm hoping these discussions. So Adrina, um, did you want to say anything? Sure. Yeah. Thanks, Liza. See, this is why, you know, Liza is such an awesome friend. You just, I just want to keep her in my pocket for all those things she always says. It makes us feel good about ourselves. Um, it's really nice to meet all of you. Um, I'm hoping we can do a bit of a round table so I can get to know some of you. Um, but as Liza said, I, I work with Tree Canada. I'm based out of Toronto, Ontario. And, um, and I'm, I'm really excited about this, about this seed session, about the the prospect of of doing um, of carrying this forward. I mean, from the discussions in Mantova, uh, just a little bit of background. Um, my, I guess my my academic research really started uh, well a while back now, but it really it started focusing on urban on urban forestry. That's that's the field that I'm in, and um, my interest was in uh, representing or rather focusing on underrepresented narratives in urban forestry more broadly. And so I started with a discussion on language constructions and agency and, um, and looking at the life of, of climbers really in Southern Ontario and, and how uh, the different areas in the Boer culture and urban forestry um, impacted them and, and their identities and, and how they thought of themselves in, as environmentalists. And one of the narratives that came through from that research was, um, gender equity and a focus on women and the inclusion of women's experiences and just the discussion and the disparity i guess in, in sort of the uh, women's roles in, in what they were doing in these two fields in urban forestry and the culture and so from there i did my postdoc research um, over the last two years through through the university of british columbia and so what we did was we uh, it was through a, a survey that was circulated to Canada and the U.S. and we had over 500 responses from women working in, in, uh, in urban forestry and, uh, and arboriculture. And some of the results that came out of that um, is what we started with in this discussion uh, in Manitoba. So I presented some of those results and, and a lot of the, the issues that women raised dealing with, I guess, working uh, in, in a male-dominated industry and some of the things that came out of that included things like um, career opportunities or lack thereof, um, you know, what their lives were like, uh, kind of working, working, you know, in rooms full of men, or it was particularly interesting to see the differences in, in what women said between 
uh, let's say women that worked more in kind of the education areas versus women that worked in the operational areas. Um, and then another conversation that kind of came through this, of course, was uh, was child rearing and um, and being mothers and how and how motherhood really impacted their their roles and their professional careers in these industries. Um, and so that's a little bit of, of background on, on where these conversations came from. And if you weren't part of the Manitoba conversation, or if you haven't seen it, it's actually available on on our YouTube channel, right? It's on it's on um, the Beyond Trees uh, YouTube. Um, channel. And um, uh, anyway, it was an interesting discussion. We're hoping to carry that forward and we're really excited. Uh, and we're also open. And I, I guess Liza and I have some ideas of how we want to start um, introducing these conversations, but we're also really interested to hear if there are topics that if you're interested in joining us in this seat session, you know, some things that you might want to discuss um, or, 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 or just raise even. Um, and maybe share stories and also learn from from others around the world. And I think what's really exciting about these these seed sessions through the international programs is is that we get to hear a lot of different perspectives. Um, and I guess the last point I'd want to share is, you know, there's certain cultural tropes, I guess, that we we take for granted. Um, you know, when we think of certain uh, generalities and and what what women face in in working in these male dominated industries it's very different um, in Canada as opposed to um, you know Eastern Europe or like it, it's just there's so many different perspectives and we're all coming from different perspectives so I think what was most exciting and really interesting and engaging in the Manitoba discussions was hearing how different those those perspectives were so we're all dealing with issues but it's the, uh, and it's not that one's more important than the other, or one's worse than another. It's really just coming to the table and, and kind of getting a sense of what, what women are facing. So that's really, um, I think, important to keep in mind too. And Liza and I are really conscious of, of that. So, so there are um, multiple perspectives. And we also, of course, try to keep the, the conversation really um, open. And with the seed sessions, Liza, in terms of the, the structure, I guess, uh, you know, it's it's intended to be more intimate. There's smaller. It's a smaller audience, and the focus is really on a discussion, and uh, sort of you know asking of interest too. I mean, it it doesn't. It, not all of it needs to be structured, and I think that's what's really nice about this is that we can you know questions will come up based on stories that other people share that will be interesting to engage with. So um, yeah. Can we do a round table? I'm really eager to kind of hear uh, hear from all of you and, and where you're from. Absolutely, your me too. Um, I want to, let me, I'll call on you if you guys don't mind um, turning on your mic, you don't have to, um, but just let us know who you are, where you're from, what you think of this. And um, let's start with Dasha. Yes, hi. Hi, can you hear me? Yes because I, um, I missed uh, the first part a little bit because I had some uh, problems with the sound. I, mm, it was really bad. I think my program was not updated, but now it's a lot better. <laughs> so um, my name is Daria and I've been working for uh, WWF Russia for many years. Uh, I, um, I've, uh, I've been doing communication and working in a press office. Uh, I've participated in the U.S. Forest Program. Um, well, it's uh, it's more than one and a half years ago now. I think so. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, well, as a as a communicator. Um, in the WWF, I've been engaging many different different uh, programs, um, and well, um, of course, wildlife and conservation, uh, but also um, a lot of public campaigns. Like one of them is um, the biggest one that we have is Earth Hour. Um, maybe you've heard of it. It's Earth Hour is when people turn off the lights for just one hour. So we, uh, so, um, we started uh, it in Russia in 2009. And uh, so it's gonna be like 12 years, I think since then, yeah, almost. Um, so, uh, uh, well, that's, um, that's mostly it about me. <laughs> Hey, 
Thank you. So, and, and it's Daria? That's... Yes, Daria. Okay, is nice born. to meet you. She's Dutch. Thank you. Daria That's is great. Thank you. Okay, um, well, uh, Liza's going to be right back, but um, I guess I'll just go with who's sort of at the, at the top of my screen. Um, uh, Martina. Uh, yeah, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Tina. Uh, nice to meet you all. Nice to see you, Dasha <laughs> and Sonia. Um, yeah, so I, uh, I'm actually German, but I've been living and working in Egypt for the past 14 years now. Uh, I teach for the American University in Cairo, different sustainability and environment related topics and sociology and gender. Um, but I also work a lot on projects across the country. I've, I've worked for many years for a research center that was carrying out a lot of field work, community-based engagement work uh, and project research. And now I also consult for UNDP uh, with the Arab Water Council and I'm a climate security consultant uh, there. And I've just started in my own company. So there's a lot of things going on in my life, but um, yeah, I, I, I've, um, I've got a lot of kind of interest ex interesting kind of gender related experience from working in the Arab world, I guess, <laughs> working in communities in the Arab world. So I was like this weird German girl that just like burst into communities out in the middle of the desert um, and very interesting experiences with, you know, uh, having access to different parts of the community. You know, it's a very gender segregated um, environment, very, very conservative. Um, so go, going in as a gender researcher and, and, you know, kind of not judging what you see and working with people and kind of, that's something to come to terms with, but also me having access to different parts of the community while my male uh, colleagues didn't was very interesting. So I was like, I was some, became something in the middle, right? neither male nor female kind of, because I was sitting with the men, I was sitting with the women and, you know, I'm kind of, uh, you know, so much so that some of my colleagues started using the Arabic male uh, pronoun for me instead of she, you, you, you male, not you me. So like there's all of these very interesting dimensions in my work in terms of, you know, trying to involve women in projects when it's quite hard uh, in terms of the culture, but also working as a female in a, I mean, it couldn't, it almost couldn't be more male dominated than here uh, in this culture. So um, yeah, those are very, very interesting experiences also in terms of um, gender and access to resources. In Egypt, women own something like 2% of the agricultural land or something, um, really limited access to resource ownership, uh, decision-making, access to financial resources. So kind of, you know, juggling this, this respect for the community and real kind of interest in the community and loving the community, but at the same time also seeing things that as a gender researcher would be shocking, right? So this is a very interesting kind of, complex, you know, emotional st state I'm in all the time <laughs> here. Um, so there's quite a few interesting kind of stories from, from field work in Egypt, I guess. I work a lot in desert communities um, that are very remote, um, but also always feeling so welcome everywhere, you know, has been like a very defining part of my work in Egypt. Um, so yeah, I guess that's it from my, from my side for now. <laughs> Thanks, Tina. Appreciate that. Um, let's see. Can, let's. Shall we go to Tatiana? Hi, guys. I am from Mexico. Um, I am responsible of a national program uh, called Urban Bear Program. Uh, we are like um, in. We are in one hundred cities, more or less. Um, um, we have a club too, call it Amasilias, it's, it's for women and uh, all you say <laughs> uh, sounds for me in Mexico, it's a little difficult, um, uh, this uh, situation between men and, and the competition and uh, a lot of things. And, um, I have a project to uh, call it Papalome. Uh, it's about uh, butterflies. Uh, in, it's a citizen science project, and and we uh, will 
start uh, monitoring, butterfly monitoring next year, and a handbook, uh, um, more like a material that don't exist, uh, and, and thinking in, in childs and in women, no? uh, all around that. But you are amazing. Anyway, it's, it's really cool uh, uh, hear about you. Thank you, thank you, Tatiana. Thank you for joining us. I really appreciate that. Um, thank you. And I like the work. I, I'm partial to birds and butterflies, so <laughs> I love that. Uh, Sonia, please. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Uh, nice to meet you. Um, well, I yeah, I have met some of you, but I'm really happy to meet more people. So first of all, I'm a forest engineer. It's a very uh, rare profession here and around the world. So that's the first challenge uh, challenge for me. Uh, always, it's like, what is that about? <laughs> So it's, it's, it's interesting. And um, secondly, well, my country is also like a very conservative kind of um, make, make up country. Like you will think it's an open-minded country, but it's not. And it's not just not open-minded, but um, you can see like in terms of economy and uh, salaries, how women are affected by that you can find things like women that is better like prepared but receive less money just because they assume the the hard work like the physical work is more um like is more likely to be done for men something like that so yeah it's a lot of you know challenges um right now i have been uh, had experience within the private sector, uh, working for big companies, international companies, and also for the public sector in the professional way. But also in the community projects, I've been supporting some uh, organizations that also are like directed by men. And uh, I think it's important to, to maybe um, to show how, how serious we're being taken in many of the participations in a professional or in also like in a volunteering perspective. I think I will, I will maybe try to like show that how have, I have feel in many of the organizations I've been working on. And um, yeah, like I think, uh, a good thing on my in my career is that the university had like a community uh, phase. We 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 really really have like experience working with uh, minorities like black and indigenous communities, and also uh, well right now I have experience a bit with a uh, city communities. So it's interesting to know how women in different uh, levels of let's say. Uh, civilization um, can develop or not. That will be my my plus. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you, Sonia. Um, really appreciate that uh, great work. And also, uh, she is a forest engineer, and she also volunteers for uh, Pro Arbol. Um, they were they do a lot of great work engaging communities, and. Um, um, do a lot of work on gardens as well. Um, let me turn this over to Alejandra, please. Yes, of course. Uh, nice to meet you. It's my first time in, in the circles of the US Forest Service. So I'm from, I'm Alejandra Gonzalez. I'm from, I'm working on Reforestamos Mexico, an NGO, a Mexican NGO. And we're in recent years, we we're uh, working with the urban forest topics. And about this, these things that mentioned, I think that it's a, a issue that we recently noted that, for example, with the three series of the world program, we noticed that 
um, more of the uh, personnel that following the application and the, the, the distinction of the international distinction are women. No? And all the, uh, well, normally the, the majors are, <laughs> are men, but the women are leading these uh, programs these en en environmental programs. And also there are, um, like <laughs> Sonny said, like, like the, in, the field, in the field of the forest engineering are uh, dominating for men. So I think that it's a challenge for the women to include in these topics of the urban foresting that are, are normally uh, the technicians and the officers of the urban trees office, there are men. So uh, I think that it's a really uh, challenging that women are facing for the, for the administrations in the public administration. So I think that it's a, a really thing that I, well, I think that it's changing, that it's, um, there are more, more and more uh, women uh, working on these topics. And also related with the these technical personnel and and the officers, uh, we are uh, leading a capacitation or work uh, workshops for the urban the young urban for well for young persons of uh, little uh, organizations or general the public the young. Uh, public and topics of these urban tree topics and managing of urban areas. And we, we also noticed that more than the 50% were men and we, we could encourage about for this, this scheme of the, of the program, well, uh, pushing of the uh, profiles of, men, of women. So the young women, because also we noticed that uh, there are less of men no? so uh, we're noticed that also they're not I think that it's more dominating for for the for the young men and we could we're encouraging the 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 girls for for pushing their projects the urban projects for for the urban trees or in generally the, the managing of the urban areas you know so we can we notice that we it's uh, it's a lack of the the problems with the with the gender. So that's my my perspective with the work we we're doing. Awesome! Thank you so much, Alejandra. Um, and then I want to get to my two colleagues, uh, Lee Blazer. Uh, she manages the entire cadre of seminars. Um, all 12 of them it, at international programs. She's also working a lot on the topic with Mike, actually, on environmental justice, as well as other issues. Lee? Thanks, Liza. Um, I echo Adrena's sentiments that you do great introductions that make everyone feel so wonderful. <laughs> Um, I, yeah, I'm, uh, my background is in international education, not uh, urban forestry, so I'm here just as a fan, really. Um, thanks for the invite. And last but not least, Mike Rizzo, um, who really supports and has supported for decades the um, empowerment of women, young girls, youth, um, in the stewardship of natural resources. Mike? Well, good morning and good afternoon, Tina. <laughs> How is everybody? Daria? Um, just saying hello. I, I've been more listening in. Uh, I almost uh, I was going to sign off and Liza said, stay, stay. So I'm listening in and um, really le learning um, uh, from everyone here as well as some other colleagues who are not on the call, but ways to support projects that consider myself more behind the scenes um, in a lot of uh, aspects. Um, I think I know everybody on the call. I think uh, Alejandra, I know Andre Forestamos, but uh, we have not met in person, but everybody else we've either met uh, through the Urban Bird Network, um, through the seminar, and um, really just um, looking to see how best to support not only this session, but also as we move forward. And I guess the last thing I would like to, to, to add in, I think 
when we were uh, on the Nature of Cities call earlier. Oh, hola Miranda. <laughs> uh, Nature of Cities uh, call and uh, David was talking about the different levels, you know, maybe we can have a mayor or this and that. And my immediate, immediate thoughts were too, and I know Adrina, you, you've been in Chicago with us and Sonia and Tina and Dasha is like, what about the mom's perspective? And it which really ties into what the session, what uh, I, I see that Liza and Adrina are proposing. And we saw that during the seminar, we've had the perspective of some moms or um, school children. And I'm very interested in hearing the other perspectives that do not necessarily come out during an organized session, during a registration. So I wanna work with everybody, not only in this call, but the other colleagues, how do we find those voices and encourage them to participate, not only in the nature of cities, but as we move forward. So thank you uh, for giving me a few seconds to say hello. Thanks, Mike. And yes, I, I love the idea of bringing moms in and I, Adrina and I will address that in a little bit. Um, the idea, so just to launch this, Adrina and I want to have discussions that are really authentic and sincere. And um, we want to hear what people are, are going through, what women are going through, the challenges. Um, and in order for us to do that, we decided that, because we were invited for this topic to do a keynote session, a plenary, a much wider audience than say 30 or even 100 people. The, the issue with that was that it was, a, it was unidirectional. So we were talking or the panel would be talking and we didn't really get anything from the audience. So we decided that we would do a seed session, make it more intimate, make it more dialogue heavy. And unlike in Mantova where we had a panel of about six or seven people, we wanted to keep our panels to about three people, including, uh, not including the facilitator, which would be Adrina or somebody else. Um, and I would be a co-facilitator plus a producer in the background. Um, and aside from you all, we've al we also have others who weren't able to join us today. They'll be joining us on the 13th for a similar session. Um, and many of them are from Russia, Europe, Eurasia. We have folks from um, the Philippines, from West Africa, et cetera. So, we and it covers a lot of topics and so when Adrina and I were putting this together we were at first we were like okay let's have the seed session and then let's do the mom session on international day of women on March 8th and then we were like wait a minute but what about this topic and this topic and we just started listing it down and um I'm going to turn it over to Adrina to to weigh in on that. That'll be my segue to her and um, her vision and then open it up for discussion and, in, and, and an invitation to participate. Thanks, Liza. It's, it's, and it's true, it kind of, it mushroomed or just ballooned from there because we were, there's just an endless amount of topics and things that we wanted to, to tackle, I guess. So when Liza and I first started talking about this, um, so, so I, I was away last, not last year, the year before, I guess, through 2019, because I just had a baby, my first baby. And, and all of these, I mean, for those of you do, that do have babies, I mean, it was just like this whole new world. I mean, people would tell me that people that had kids would say stuff about their kids. I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure. But you don't really get it until you have one. And so for me, a lot of the topics and the emotions and, and then coming back to work after going through that, um, there was just a lot, like a lot to kind of deal with. And, 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 and the way I thought about my work and my research before having a baby, like I, it kind of, everything just shifted and everything was all of a sudden through these mom tinted glasses and nothing else really matters. Cause like that comes first and, and that's, a, and that, and that's okay. Right. But it was like that total mind shift and kind of career and, and everything is sort of about you. And then all of a sudden it, it shifts and, and that was a, a big adjustment for me. And, uh, and so all these topics started coming out of it because everything is now about, you know, okay, family and, and how does this impact my work? And, you know, am I doing enough? And, you know, what do you want to leave for them? And what are the role, like, you know, what's the kind of role model you want to show for them? And so all of a sudden it just became this, you know, it could be a weekly show. I don't know. Like it was just one of these things that Liza and I started talking about. And she's like, we can't do all that in an hour. And I was like, but we can. And she was like, no, let's do a series. And, 
and so that's that's how that kind of decision evolved because we we want to spend some time really looking at some of these topics you know around raising environmentally aware children uh, or balancing you know sort of nature and technology or um, you know sort of looking at the cultural differences in how we raise our children I mean there's just so many different topics and, and I'm just talking about sort of that that parenthood or, or the the mother or caregiver role but um, but yeah there was just a lot of different things that we wanted to to discuss and to share and to then learn um, again really all about the different perspectives and um, that that women and mothers like bring to the table from their different cultures and and countries and um, and I think just uh, you know I think Sonia you were saying you know the kind of idea and it wasn't related to the mother thing but just looking at how how women in different um, different areas or, or levels of you know whether it's a professional ladder or different kind of uh, and, and I think that uh, I don't know different levels of of where you're coming from and how how do women develop um, across scale and I think that that's really interesting um, for me to explore like looking at sort of different you know like we think of sort of vertical scale in terms of climbing a corporate ladder or when you think of career development but then there's that lateral scale of all the personal and cultural nuances that we have to navigate in all of the the kind of work that we do but the relationships that we build and that we share as well um so there's just a lot there that we want to unpack and explore together and um and yeah and so anyway that's a bit of context and that's sort of how these conversations developed and we do see um the nature of cities seed session focusing on on topics around women and urban urban natural resource management as a, a, a launching pad, if you will, to a series that, that Liza and I would like to develop over the next year. Um, yeah, and we, you know, and we haven't sort of solidified the structure and, and, you know, at least once a month we were thinking, but there's just a lot there. And the more participation we have, the more frequently we can have discussions. Um, and I also wanna share that Liza and I started a Facebook group on moms in, in environmental and natural resource management. So. Uh, it's very casual, and if any of you would like to join, please feel free. But that's uh, that's also there as well. Um, yeah, and I guess that's uh, that's it, sort of from my end. I'm I'm interested to kind of hear your thoughts on some topics, or if you're interested, and um, or if there's you know anything you'd like to share. I guess we we'll just open it up. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Adrina. Did uh, just really quickly, did you want to mention what our two questions was for our launch? Uh, at the Nature of Cities Festival. Maybe that will help us get going. Absolutely. Okay. So, um, so we had two areas, I'm just pulling it up here, that we, we thought we could focus on for the launch. Um, one focused on careers. So what, what would you tell younger women entering the workforce about the career trajectory that you've experienced? So in terms of challenges and opportunities, um, and then sharing experiences in a story. And the other, the other sort of area, topic area that we wanted to explore is just in general life in urban areas. Um, so what are the challenges of urbanization that most affect women in your city where you're from? Um, and why is it important for women to be at the table in addressing some of those challenges? Uh, and then more broadly, you know, how can women be part of the conversations to address these challenges? Um, and, uh, and looking at your perspective on how, how we can affect change. Perfect. And so I think what we want to start now is just to hear from you how, do, you know, about what you think of those two, three main questions that we want to pose um, at the, the Nature of Cities Festival. And then in the chat, I just copied and pasted from the um, invite, some of the other ideas that came up, uh, things like women in research. Uh, women with PhDs, woohoo, Dr. Adrena Bardekian, for oh. example, um, and uh, a look at other items and see what's missing. You know, right now uh, we identified, I think, six uh, main subject areas, and I'm sure there are a lot more out there. So we want to crowdsource it from you guys. And also, if you have, if you're really passionate about one of those topics and would like to be, on that panel or other pa or multiple panels, let us know. 
So um, don't be shy. Um, please let us know what you think. Yeah, um, can I say something? I just thought of one of issues, which is would be very uh, relevant for now. <laughs> it's uh, if you're speaking about uh, working moms and uh, children and um, coronavirus. Is um, so we're uh, like at least in Russia, it's the situation that if uh, when we had this uh, the lockdown. It's uh, and when people, well, families had to choose who is staying with the kids, it's always mom's work which suffered, which happened to me as well because I had to uh, go on a part time actually. So I used to work 100% now, um, I can work only 50% because there is uh, no, uh, well, no, uh, somebody has to be with the kids, and it happened a lot, um, as far as I know. So, a lot of women actually had to sacrifice the work, uh, even very qualified ones, um, during that time. So when something like that happens, uh, uh, yes, women are, the moms are the, are the ones which, um, which uh, sacrifice. So it's maybe it's also part of the culture in, in Russia because, um, uh, it's like um, women's work is looked at as some something like complementary, you know, um, like something which can be, um, which would be, you know, cut <laughs> first <laughs> in the like company's budget <laughs> uh, when something like that happens. Maybe we could discuss that as well. Thank, thank you. Uh, thank Dasha. you. Yeah. I think we're finding that that is a um, something that everyone uh, is ch challenged with around the world. I am hearing a lot of that. We heard from some people in our Facebook group, but also just some stories from friends who, um, women friends who have to give up um, a lot uh, to stay at home with their, their kids. And also the, the last part of your um, of what you said of women's of certain work that is viewed as women's work, I know that's been said by Erica Svensson and Lindsay Campbell about you know social forestry, for example, as being oh, women's research, um, things like that. So that's a yeah, yeah. So like working in an uh, well, uh, NGO organization, something mm -hmm. as, you know, not serious maybe, or well, saving nature, it's like, you know, well, it's like, come on, we're doing business here and you're saving pandas. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly, thank you. Um, I think I saw Mike's hand go up, but maybe that was just to say, hello. Oh, sorry. I was Miranda had the tube and I was waving to Miranda. Sorry, oh. it's it's like we're in person, but uh, but did you I, 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 keep uh, <laughs> I haven't seen Miranda in a, in a year or so since our last travels to Mexico. So, uh, one thing I did put in the chat, and um, I'm listening and actually doing paperwork for Nature Cities in the background. But um, one area, and I think those who know me know that I'm very interested in exploring is is, is people in general, but especially. Um, uh, women in general who do not who do not have degrees, and uh, who often discount their knowledge, like oh, and in a, a great example with some of the the immigrant moms we work with here in Chicago, oh, I don't know anything. Well, that's the female bird and that's the male bird, but I don't know much. And then you know we build a confidence a bit, and oh, I remember that bird when I was a child in Mexico and it would arrive in October, but I don't know much. Oh yeah, and then it would leave in October or, or April, and now we see it here, and then slowly we build out. And what, um, and I, I think everybody knows me working, especially, you know, one of my passions is early childhood education with um, uh, expecting moms and dads when we have possibility to five years of age because of the access to the parents. And it isn't just everybody says, oh, the kids are the future. Well, yes, but also the parents are part of that future where we hone the skills as the, the primary teacher in the home. And we want children to respect the knowledge of their parents. It, it isn't just about the degree. It isn't just about the title as the mayor or the, 
city council man or woman. And we really, um, and I think about that a lot is how much um, a parent, because they didn't study, they're, they're, they're not looked at as knowledgeable. And uh, so that's just something I would like to, to encourage. And I think it complements well of what uh, Adrena is talking about uh, as a mom in natural resource management uh, and Liza and well, everybody. And um, it's also just being a, a, a parent in the home where you know you have day-to-day -day concerns as everybody here does and but also contributing to the child to look at their their mom dad extended family as a a, a resource but um that's that's why i was waving and that's why i was adding in on the chat but thank you thanks mike thanks so true that um anybody else uh, yeah, can I just add to that um, in terms of engaging women? I mean, there's such an important cultural aspect to that too. Um, and a lot of projects, you know, we were trying to engage women as much as we can. And then sometimes because of um, gender division of labor, that's just so hard, you know, because whatever we're working on is not seen as a woman's job. Um, so you cannot just drag women into a project um, where it's not culturally accepted and you could really end up causing issues in the community um, or even engagement in terms of consultation or participatory events where of course it should be normal that everybody's together and then culturally that's just not an option so you have to really come up with um, kind of very uh, creative ways of, of engaging women differently even though that's counterintuitive from like a gender mainstreaming perspective but that's maybe the only option that we have sometimes, you know, in, in Arab Hi. countries where we might have to have like a, you know, a community meeting and then a women's community meeting on the side that's completely unrelated. But you have to kind of go an extra mile to, to in, engage women and often in different ways or in specific ways or in more home-based ways. But I think, um, and that's why it's often not done because it's kind of like an extra step that's hard to do or doesn't really meet the main target or something. Um, so yeah, I think, you know, just kind of while engaging women also thinking of, you know, kind of creative methodologies of, of you know, in, in culturally different settings, perhaps. Yeah, uh, sorry, I just <laughs> step in, but I am really like interest with my cantina to learn about how to engage young women because um, in my case, as like a, let's say like an adult, I have, I received many questions or like admiration kind of from girls like teenager about how is, how did you reach the engineering level? Like it's really rare for them. And, you know, I would like to really help them to see it as a, you know, a normal thing, achievable for everyone. So I would really like to learn how to engage young women to reach anything, any profession and not look at it as a rare thing because that also condition like, not many people is like able to get that as a risk, you know? Oh, I maybe get to the secure and I just maybe just, you know, take care of home. Or that's, I think that's one of the conditioning to reach the educational level, the, the fears and like the expectations from the society. So thank you. Yeah, can I add to that? Maybe this is something I also wanted to say about the career topic, um, women and careers. I think also having the courage to just be yourself, right? And to do what you want to do is often just so hard um, in many cultures and even in our culture. Um, you know, I think if, if I look at my <laughs> uh, CV or career, I mean, it's been just so crazy. Like I, you know, before having finished my PhD, I just took off and started working in the middle of the desert. Everybody thought I was crazy. Absolutely everybody in my life was against it. Um, and it turned out to be the best thing I ever did. <laughs> so I think often it's just kind of going with your own 
spirit with your own drive finding out what your real drive is in life right what what drives you what you're passionate about and then also be confident you know when i studied environment wasn't a thing at all my parents were like what what are you going to do with that there's no jobs in that you know and now that's the topic on the planet right sustainability climate uh, you know nature so i think you know just kind of having the courage to to stick with what you think you know is what you want to do and then go through with it despite all the you know all the the negativity you get along the way and all the doubts and the, um i think this is something that i think is also important for girls you know specifically in different cultures to kind of get that strength and see maybe other women who've who have done that who've become what they might want to become later or something and go like yeah it can be done you can do it it's it's all about you yeah and just um and Tina to kind of add to that like my like my background I'm Armenian that's my background and when I was growing up like we had like doctor lawyer engineer like that was like the options I have an older sister we were two girls and that was those were our career options there was no and I and I did my first degree in creative writing so my parents were like like it was like shameful that I was exploring the arts as a possible career um and and so I think that idea that we want to look at different cultures and cultural perspectives on career opportunities and just Sonia going back to what you said about it starts in the home you know or Mike what you were saying like you know that early childhood education piece and parents you know parents as the first kind of touchstone for for kids but i i think looking at the different cultural perspectives is is imperative and when we think about building confidence and finding um finding that drive that that spirit that you're talking about and that drive i think is um it is key in sort of that environment that you 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 grow up in and liza and i when we talked about you know scale and and how we live our lives we kind of branch out right like how you live um and you know in canada it's like you know there's just all like there's just so much um multiculturalism and 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 just based on the immigration patterns and you know how we live our lives in 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 a family unit is very different than let's say the city that you live in which is also very different perhaps than the the culture of that particular country so i think looking at those circles of of um cultural scales is also interesting to examine when we think about how those things shape our our confidence and and our sense of identity um you know from from childhood all the way up to you know choosing careers or having families and how we raise our own families and yeah th <clears throat> thank you adrian and to build on that you know and also what everybody else has said um how do you empower young women who may not have choices that's you know you can empower young women to maybe break out of a mold a cultural mold but it's still somewhat permissive in in the society that they're in you know it's they'll just get a or a no oh, you shouldn't be doing that but what if you really have no choice and i'm thinking tina about someone like agustina who um it, who is uh, someone that we we put in touch with Tina last year, who was in charge of World Cleanup Day in Indonesia, and you know how she broke out of the mold in a very very strict religiously strict um, part of Indonesia, and where she is now, um, and how she's led this multi volunteer charge to clean up um, across the archipelago. Um, so I think, you know, having, having that question at the forefront, because we'll have questions like that, like, okay, well, we don't have a choice. It's great. You got to, you know, go off to the desert or become a forest engineer or work at the World Wildlife Fund, but I don't have that. And so what do we say to those women? And, and maybe, and it's okay to say, we don't know the answer, you know, um, <clears throat> But I think also, I think, I think there's also role models. And I think that every woman makes, has some sort of impact, you know, I think, for example, even in remote areas or very conservative communities where I've worked, even though I was the weirdo most of the time, I think I did have some sort of impact. I mean, I was different, right, for everyone. But I think, I think kids seeing me um, you know, directing a project or, you know, making a presentation or teaching or speaking in front of men, speaking with men about something, making decisions with men. I think every single one of those experiences 
would have some sort of impact, you know, on, on both sides. I think both the men who saw me and saw that I, I wasn't, I mean, I was in a different place to what is common, but I wasn't completely out of, you know, I, I was still kind of respectable. I was uh, normal to some extent, you know, like I think on both sides that kind of has, has an impact. And I think that all of our work, you know, wherever it is, I think on a daily basis, just that small impact can maybe add up. I mean, this, of course, you're talking against like big walls of, you know, obstacles sometimes but um i think every little it's like all these little sparks and you know little changes that happen within communities um that i think can make a difference even though it seems like you know you don't have a very big role but i think these little you know these little influences are also very important thank you tina i think you're right i mean but and it's the kind of passive way of it, being an influencer you do thing and you're not telling somebody you should be working in the desert but more like oh, i'm working in the desert with both genders um one thing that i was thinking about with tatiana especially is this the whole birds and recreation and women i think we can add that to to the list and what are traditionally seen as for male recreation um can, we can you know talk yeah. from the women's perspective tatiana please uh, well <laughs> in fact uh, in the start uh, we we think uh, like about the urban bird program that we have uh, will well i i think we'll work we we should work <laughs> about equality but uh, they they um, the men <laughs> the main group think uh, um, it wasn't uh, a point so we decide to do this apart and uh, every friday of this year we um, um, do meetings to talk about our experience in in field, uh, how we feel, uh, what what are the challenge challenges, and and I think the the most important thing is like uh, uh, we 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 hear uh, about our problems. Um, um think what are the solutions and and one of them is put together <laughs> talk about um because this this is a system and is is really strong system and everybody say to to you that you are crazy and um it's it's not easy um and and this that you are doing too, uh, I think is, is amazing. We, we need to talk a lot uh, because um, it's not education. Uh, and in different cultures, we have this patriarchal system. So yeah, <laughs> it's a lot of details if, um, and about bird watching, uh, the profile is um, is is men, uh, um, maybe young men, uh, white men. I don't know. It's it's like kind of profile that uh, are the most, and they don't recognize uh, that um, is a an, an inequality in all of this. Sorry for my English. <laughs> I, I, I think I think to add to, to some of this, I think um, I also have to apologize. I have to leave in a minute. I have another call at, at five five Egypt time. Um, but maybe also to to maybe draw the the discussion away a little bit from um, men against women or women against men. You know, I think that's something to maybe avoid because I think a lot of the obstacles are even caused by women for other women um you know a lot of the cultural barriers I, I mean they're not only created by men they're actually also created a lot by by mothers or grandmothers or 
So I think maybe just to kind of be careful to not create more of that gender uh, divide through through our discussion. Um, oh. I agree with you. It, it's a system, no? It's, it's a patriarchal system, oh. of course. But we need uh, some spaces for for us, just for us, just to talk and, and uh, to to live, to to grow leaders between us. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so I think um, I, what I want to do going forward is have one more of these um, sessions and bring folks together to talk uh, and select, make some selections for the different panels. And I, I think you can all also self-select. I'll create, uh, Adrina and I have a Google Drive on this and we can put down all the notes from today and then merge them with the notes from the 13th. And if you have um, any pressing desire to be in one particular session, please do let us know. Um, again, we'll send these out and we'll show you the, um, what we're thinking of in terms of the topics uh, coming up and then we'll add some of your topics as well. I think uh, we can have re some really rich conversations. Um, and I really am so excited about starting, kickstarting this at the Nature of Cities Festival. Um, Adrina, do you have any last? Yeah, no, this is this has been so wonderful and to hear from all of you and, and I've been I've been taking a lot of notes. So I think we'll we'll definitely um, uh, integrate a lot of these ideas into an overarching uh, schedule, perhaps, and just just topics. And and as Liza said, if you can let us know if you're interested um, in in participating in, in either the, the TNOC kind of kickoff panel or or any of the others that that come after it, it would be really helpful for us to to start building. And it doesn't just have to be one. Of course, um, we welcome multiple participation and and uh, um, and your thoughts. And and so thank you so much for just sharing your experiences with us and your and your ideas. And um, and we can continue this conversation um, via email for sure. But as Liza said, we will have another. A conversation like this on January 13th and if you want to join us again we, we welcome we welcome that um, but yeah I'm really looking forward to getting to know some of you a bit more and um, and to the series that we're that we're putting together because it's just uh, uh, it's so important to kind of carry these conversations forward um, and learn from each other so we can make better decisions absolutely and one last word if you do know somebody that you'd who you think would be a fabulous panelist, um, let us know. Great. Hi, Pam. Hi, Pam. Hi. I'm so sorry that I had a meeting conflict. Um, what a powerful gathering. And I can't wait to listen to the recording and tune in for the next conversation. It's so good to see all of you. Good friends. Good friends indeed. Thanks everybody. I'll have the recording ready and I'll post these and send them to everyone. Thank you. Happy holidays for those that celebrate. Thank and uh, keep stay safe. Thanks everyone. Take care everyone. Thank you. Great seeing all of you. Yeah. <laughs>